This is Seeking Catharsis, a podcast from the perspective of a person currently experiencing covert narcissistic abuse. Today I want to talk about boundaries. When I met my husband, I remember telling him how I felt about cheating and lying and how that was my deal breaker. I dated cheaters in the past and had forgiven them in the past and, and learned that that was not the way to earn respect or to to work with a relationship. If the person was going to cheat and they didn't have respect for your relationship, they were going to do it regardless. And forgiving them only gave them permission to continue the poor behavior with little or no accountability. So when my husband admitted that he had been cheating on me um, three days after, well, I guess it was four days after our marriage, I was very adamant about the fact that we should end things and told him that um, I hope she was worth it and, and that he should, um, that we should get a divorce. And I felt very strongly about that. Um, Even before he had admitted that it was an affair, I wanted to seek a divorce because what I had heard when he pocket dialed me that night, the night before, was something to the effect that he did not want to marry me. And I certainly didn't want to be married to someone who didn't want to be married to me. Um, So I was was okay with ending things. Um, After that, he really made an effort to get me to change my mind, to agree to work things out. He committed to working on the relationship with me and to being a better partner. He committed to attending therapy with me um, for couples therapy. And, um, and with that, I compromised my values And it was a bit of a boundary push because he knew that was a deal breaker for me. So by asking me to do that, he knew that that was a bit of a compromise, an uncomfortable compromise, because I was always the one to say, once a cheater, always a cheater. So fast forward to today. About a year and a half ago was when this all went down. We are still working our marriage out. He broke it off with the mistress that he had been dating when we married. But that came at a huge cost to me. Instead of reconciling and focusing on our relationship after he committed to breaking up with this woman, he decided to punish me for making him break up with the person he loved. He moped around the house. He was short with me. He made sure to let me know he was very, very sad. Not verbally, but with his actions and his facial expressions and his shortness. So when I'd ask him, what's wrong? He'd say to me, how am I supposed to be? Am I supposed to be happy? I had feelings for her and you made me break up with her. So this was my fault. His sadness was my fault. His breakup with the person he cheated on me with, who he had been released to go join and be with full time, that was my fault. I was responsible for his sadness when he could have made the decision to go with her and to be with her and we could have been not knowing each other. So I found that very interesting and I was pretty frustrated with that. So as we navigated through the rest of the week, I, um, I asked him, why do you want to stay married to me? It seems like you're so miserable. It seems like you want something else. And I really don't want you to not be able to be with the person you feel you are in love with. So you should go with her if that's what you want. And he would always say, that's not what I want. 
She's not what I want. It's not about her. Okay. What is it about? I would ask. We had issues, he would say to me. We had issues. We weren't having sex. And every time he said that, I would look at him and blink. Because, yeah, it's true. We were not having sex because he wasn't having sex with me. He was having sex with other people. I was having sex with no one. But we weren't having sex, and that was a reason why he was unhappy. And I had always said to him, once he told me that was an issue, because he'd never brought it up as an issue before we got married, I was the one that brought it up and said, isn't this a little weird? Like, shouldn't we be having sex? Shouldn't we be more, like, sexual? You don't think that's odd? Is something wrong? I was always the one asking the question, broaching the subject, and being willing to have that difficult conversation. Because that's weird. You had two attractive people that were in good shape, that got along well, that weren't physically intimate in any way. So I would ask the question because there were people around us that were having babies, that were clearly having sex. And while it didn't feel like a big loss to me because I'm not a hypersexual or I wouldn't even say hypersexual. I would say I'm not a sexual person. Um, I don't want to make it seem like sex is this weird thing. But for me, it's just not something that was super important to me in a relationship. But I even knew that that was odd. So I asked him, Okay, we don't have sex, but you knew that. So why do you want to stay in this marriage? You had the choice to choose her, you know, if that's what you wanted to go for. Well, it's not about you or her. And I, and I, he, every time he would say that, I would say, is, is he trying to make me think it's about me or her? Because I'm not saying it's about me or her. I'm saying if that is what you want, then why didn't you choose to be with that person as opposed to me who you're not having sex with? Um, I didn't make it about her. It was nothing about, it wasn't anything about her. And I knew that it was about him and me. And, um, it sounded like he'd had this situation with other women in the past. And he certainly had dated other women before this woman while he was dating me. So I knew it wasn't about her. So I just, it just begged the question, like, if this is not what you want, why are you fighting for this marriage? And I never got a direct a direct answer, but you know, and I told him I said, you know, what's the purpose of marriage to you? Like, you know, I I married you because I loved you, I enjoyed being around you, I want to have a family with you. That's those were the reasons why I married you, but why did you marry me? It was for companionship. We got along well. We'd been together for so long. And that was his answer. And I was like, okay, okay. But it seems like it's run its course. So, you know, what? why stay in this marriage? Um, and how will this work if, you're, if you don't, will you ever want to have sex with me? No, I don't, I don't see that happening. Okay, but you're saying that that seems to be important to you. So what is the purpose of having a marriage with me if you don't want to have sexual intercourse with me and that's something that you value in a relationship? So it was always very confusing when I would try to understand his perspective because I was even trying to get him to to admit how ridiculous this was that he was blaming me for breaking up with this woman telling me that that relationship was passionate and that he, you know, was the first time he felt happiness. So I was like, well, shit, go for it. Go for it. Like if, if, if that's how you feel, you have one life, you should be with her. And, you know, that's, that's what I think. And whenever I would say that it would just be this, no, like I love you and I can't imagine my life without you. It was like a conversation with himself trying to convince himself to be with me when I wasn't trying to convince him. I was actually trying to convince him to 
pursue his own happiness separate from me if that was what was making him so miserable. Um, So we had these conversations over a few weeks and months into the marriage and, of course, several years after our relationship started. Of course, none of this was discussed prior to marriage, which would have avoided all of this heartache and pain and I probably probably would have found someone else by now who's normal but he got me hooked in and then he says to me well I'd say in this marriage if I was able to date have sex travel with and be able to fall in love with other women and I go so you want to be single that sounds like being single That's not single. I want to be married, but this is what I need to have in this marriage. Okay, that sounds like you're single. So what do I get out of this? Well, why would why would like why would we want to stay in this marriage? Oh, you get to do the same thing. And I'm looking at him and I'm like, but that's not if that was if I was able to do the same thing, you would have never hid that you were dating other people. You would have never been jealous of me remaining in contact with ex exes if i was able to do the same thing then we wouldn't be in this situation right now that would have been a, a conversation you would have been you would not have been hiding it you would not have been thinking that i didn't want that lifestyle so this doesn't make any sense so i eventually was like you know so if i agree to that what does that mean for our relationship does that mean that you know, I can get my needs met, I can have my companion, I can have, you know, a husband that feels like he's getting his needs met, and who's also able to meet mine with respect to companionship and family and just the things that I value, um, which are very basic things. And they're not shiny, they're not, you know, there's not a lot to it. It's just basic love, care, respect, and time. That's it. And he, you know, didn't seem like he wanted to give it to me. And I was just like, then why would I be in this marriage? And I would sit there talking to him and trying to convince him why it was a bad idea for us to approach a marriage like this if I wasn't you know, I wasn't angry at this point. I was just kind of like, this doesn't make any sense. Can we just, can we just do what makes sense? Like, yeah, this hurts. This sucks. You know, this is definitely not what I envisioned for myself at this age, at this point in time, after all of these years I've spent with someone. But if this is what it is, I'm okay with it and I can let you go. I don't have any reason to try to force you into a situation you do not want to be in. But somehow he was able to convince me to think about an open relationship. And that's what I did. I started looking into it and talking about parameters. And every time I would talk about parameters and understanding, he would tell me, you're trying to control me. And I'm like, no, I'm trying to understand how I can be comfortable in this situation because you've already cheated on me. And now I don't I don't want that to happen. I don't want you to start dating someone who thinks I'm out of the picture and then you're just you know, you're doing having an affair and not having an open relationship. And um that's kind of how it all went. Somewhat under duress, I would suppose, but it wasn't fun. It wasn't clear what I was signing up for. And he never agreed to do many of the things I wanted, which was consent, disclosure, making sure that these women knew who I was, making sure that if he dated other people that he also dated me. You know, basic things like that, especially if you're a wife and someone's primary partner, you should at least be treated with the same amount of respect, time, and care as the other people involved, if not more. And he seemed to be very unwilling to do that. Opening my marriage meant 